All right, now we have learned how to solve all kinds of different equations. Um, we've reviewed how to um, factor. We've learned the quadratic formula. We've learned how to complete the square. We've learned about um, imaginary roots, uh, imaginary numbers, uh, the complex numbers. We've learned a lot of stuff um, over the course of, you know, these videos. So now we're going to put that all together and we're going to learn how to solve some even bigger equations. So let's look at this equation right here. We have x to the fourth plus x squared minus 12 equals zero. And, um, you know, it, whenever you look at this, wouldn't it be nice if this was just an x squared plus x minus 12 equals zero? Because we've learned how to factor and how to solve. If we could get it into that form, then we could just factor and solve. This is where we do something called u substitution. In this case, I'm going to let u equal my x squared. Because if you'll remember, our quadratic formula, or our quadratic form, I should say, is normally ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So if I could get it to look more like that, then I could work with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let u equal x squared because if you'll notice our middle term is always the the plain x or the plain variable. This first one is our squared term. So if I were to find out what u squared is, well if I were to square x squared that would be x to the fourth which is lovely because now instead of x to the fourth here in my problem I'm going to replace that with u squared substituting that in plus instead of x squared I'm going to replace that with u minus 12 equals 0 and now this is quadratic and we can use all of the techniques or any of the techniques that we've learned in order to solve it. This one actually will factor very easily with trial and error. That will be u and u and um, let's see a plus 4 and a minus 3. When we multiply those we get negative 12. When we combine those terms we get a positive 1u so that works. Now we can continue solving exactly what we've learned before. So u plus 4, this factor, will equal 0. And the u minus 3 factor will also equal 0. So solving each one, we get u equals negative 4 and u equals 3. Which would be great and fine if we started off with u's in the problem, but we didn't start off that way. In fact, this u, I said, represented x squared. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to back substitute. So this is actually x squared equals negative 4. Oops, let me write that a little bit better. And in order to solve that, I would have to take the square root of both sides. So x would equal the square root of negative 4. Remember, we've already dealt with those before. That would be 2i. So we're going to have plus or minus 2i. Over here, for our other one, we had x squared equals 3. So again, to solve for x, we'd have to take the square root of both sides. So x would equal plus or minus the square root of 3. So actually, in this problem, we have four answers here. We have a, a, a positive 2i. We have a negative 2i. We have a positive square root of 3 and a negative square root of 3. Now I will tell you that one thing that you really need to be very careful about in all of these problems that are quadratic in form. Since you are replacing or doing a substitution, you need to check every one of these to make sure that they work in the problem. A lot of times by doing new substitution, you will get an answer that works in the algebra, but it doesn't work back in the original problem. So go back and substitute 2i in place of the x's and make sure it works. And then negative 2i and then the square root of 3 and then the negative square root of 3. These all work in this problem.